It's time for another Lagrangian mechanics problem. Uh, and I'm working on uh, forces of constraint. This is part of my second semester classical mechanics course. You can find the playlist for all of those videos down below. Let's get started. So here's a pendulum. We've seen that a many of times. Uh, and we want to find not just the equation of motion, which isn't trivial, I'll tell you right now. Um, people like to think it's trivial, it's not. But we want to find the force of constraint. So what's the ten in this case, it would be the tension in the string. What's the tension in the string? It's not constant. OK. So for this, we're going to use uh, Lagrange multipliers. And so the idea is to under constrain the system. Normally, a, a pendulum has one degree of freedom. You could re re uh, represent that motion with just one variable theta. But we want to let there be two variables. Uh, R and theta. Okay, I want to under constrain it and then apply a constraint and use that to find the equation of constraint. So here's how we're going to do that. Number one, um, write the Lagrangian for two degrees of freedom. So I'm going to have my degrees of freedom being R and theta. And then I'm going to come up with an equation of constraint, F. In this case, I'm going to say uh, F of R and theta is going to be equal, and I want it equal to zero. So I'm going to say R minus r equals zero. So r, capital R, is the length of my string. That's my constraint. My constraint is that r has to be equal to r. <clears throat> and I don't know if you can tell, but I'm saying lowercase r when I say r, and then I say uppercase r when I say r. So when I say r is equal to r, you know what I'm talking about, right? OK. I'm just kidding. I'm writing it down, too, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, and there's no theta constraint. And then I can write down two Lagrange equations, and it's got this extra term in there, lambda, partial of f with respect to each variable, and then the, norm, the rest of the Lagrangian. Okay, So I'm going to get two of these, and the idea is I can find the equation of the force of constraint in the r direction, f constraint in the r direction, I guess it would be lowercase r, is lambda partial of f with respect to r. So once I find that lambda and I take the partial of f with respect to r, which is this one, it's pretty easy here. Shouldn't be too bad. OK, so I'm going to do this. The um, You could just write the kinetic energy by inspection because it's polar coordinates, not too bad. I'm not going to do that because I, don't, I like to just, it doesn't hurt to redo this stuff, right? So how do I find the kinetic energy of this in terms of lowercase r and theta? Well, it's not so easy, but I can write the kinetic energy in terms of uh, Cartesian coordinates x dot squared plus y dot squared. And then I can write x and y in terms of r and theta. So let's just say this is my position right here. Uh, x is going to be this value right here. So I'm going to say, and it's not, a, I mean, it's not necessarily polar coordinates like you would normally think. It's going to be equal to r negative r. Is it negative? I'm going to say negative r times sine of theta the way I have it drawn right there. But what if it's over here? I guess I should draw the pendulum over here. Let's just say plus. I think it'll work out either way. I'm going to start with the pendulum over here. Yeah, that's the ticket. OK, and then I can write uh, y is going to be negative r. This is still theta. And that's my y value. Negative r cosine theta. Now I can take the derivative of both of those, x dot. It's going to be equal to, now I have two terms that have a derivative, right? I have the r term and the sine theta. So this is actually going to be r dot sine theta plus r theta dot cosine theta. Because I have to take the derivative of sine theta, I get cosine theta. But then I have to take the derivative of the inside, which is uh, theta dot. And then I can do the same thing for y dot. It's going to be negative r dot cosine theta plus r, because I'm going to get a cosine theta, the derivative of that is negative sine, so that's going to cancel that. So I'm going to get r theta dot sine theta. Now I need to square both of these terms. Uh, I'm going to squeeze it in right here. Uh, I've done this a bunch of times, so it's, it's OK. x dot squared is going to be r dot squared sine squared theta plus two of these terms, 2 times r, r dot theta dot sine theta, cosine theta, plus r squared, theta dot squared, cosine squared theta. And then y dot squared down here at the bottom is going to be equal to r dot squared, 
cosine squared theta minus 2 r r dot theta dot sine theta cosine theta plus r squared theta dot squared sine squared theta. Okay, so when I add those two together, these two terms cancel. These two terms, I can factor out um, r squared theta dot squared, and I get cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. Same thing over here. I can factor out r dot squared, and I get sine squared plus cosine squared, 1. So <clears throat> we can say t is 1 half m r dot squared plus r squared theta dot squared. I think I've done that so many times. It's just, I don't know what to say. Okay, and then I guess I should write the potential u is just mgy, which is going to be m g negative r cosine theta, because y is negative r cosine theta. Okay, <clears throat> so let's write f is r minus r, and then l is 1 half m r dot squared plus r squared theta dot squared minus u, but u is negative mgr, so it's actually going to be plus m g r cosine theta. Okay, so now I'm going to get two Lagrange or the Lagrange equations. The first one, let's do r. So it's going to be the partial of L with respect to r plus the par lambda partial of f with respect to r is the time derivative of the partial of L with respect to r dot. So I'm going to start right here and do it by pieces, the partial of L with respect to r. So I go through here, Here's an r. So I need to take the partial of that. I get the 2 down front multiplied by the 1 half. So I get mr theta dot squared. There's an r term over here too. So I get plus mg cosine theta. Now I need to do the partial of f with respect to r, which is just 1, right? And then I need to do... Uh, the partial of L with respect to R dot, that's going to be, there's only one R dot term right there, so it's going to be M R dot. And if I take the derivative of that, then it's get M R double dot. So this equation becomes M R theta dot squared plus M G cosine theta, that's that one, plus lambda equals M R double dot box it because that's important this is actually important too okay now let's do the same thing for theta so the partial of L with respect to theta I'm gonna do it in pieces over here is the only term so I'm gonna take the derivative of cosine I get negative so I get negative M G R sine theta, and then the partial of theta with respect to theta is just 1, so that's it. Um, next, yep, next I'm going to do the partial plus lambda times the partial of f with respect to theta, but the partial of f with respect to theta is 0. There's no f, there's no theta term in there. And then I have to do the partial of L with respect to theta dot, and up here I get just one theta dot term, so that's going to be equal to m r squared theta dot. I bring the 2 down. Now when I take the derivative of that ddt, the partial of L with respect to theta dot, I have, I have two terms, right? I have two terms that have a theta, I mean a time dependence. So this first one, this r, so if I uh, take the derivative of that, I'm going to get 2 m r, and then i got to take the derivative of, of r, so I get r dot, theta dot, and then I have to do the other one over here, plus m r squared theta double dot. Putting it all together, I get negative m g r sine theta equals 2 m r r dot theta dot plus m r squared theta double dot. Put a box around that. So now I actually have three equations, three unknowns, right? I have this equation, this equation, this one, and I don't know r double dot, I don't know lambda, I don't know theta double dot. So let's go up here. 
and say, if I have r equals r, I guess I should rewrite these, r equals r, and I take the derivative of both sides, I get r dot equals zero, right? Because r is a constant, so if I take the derivative of that side, I get zero. And then r double dot is also equal to zero. So if I apply that to these two equations, they become something a little bit simpler. Let's write them on another piece of paper. So this one becomes m. I can also put in r for r. r theta dot squared plus m g cosine theta plus lambda equals zero, right? Because r double dot zero. And then this one becomes negative m g r sine theta equals this term is zero, right? Because I have an r dot in there. So I just get m r squared theta double dot. Okay, so let's solve this one for theta double dot. I can divide both sides by m. I can divide both sides by uh, r squared, and I get theta double dot is negative g over r sine theta. So this gives me my equation of motion in the theta direction, right? This is the equation of motion for a pendulum. And yes, here's where you see that if theta is small, let's just say small, I was trying to think of the math, <laughs> then sine theta is approximately equal to theta. And so now you get a simple harmonic oscillator because you have the second derivative is some, some constant times the, first, the, the, the power, the, the variable. It looks just like a harmonic oscillator, and you can solve that. But, but if, it's, if you have sine theta, it's not so easy. Let's solve for this equation up here for theta dot squared. Um, if, I div if I subtract that from both sides, I get m r squared Actually, I want to solve that for, let's solve that for lambda. So I get lambda equals um, negative m r theta dot squared minus m g cosine theta. Okay, so we have a problem here, right? Because there, there is a way to solve this. There is a way. And what you do is you solve this for theta dot, and then you assume, make assumption about theta double dot, um, or you make an assumption about theta dot, and then you, you solve for it and you make an assumption that's some constant time plus some cosine theta term, and then you take the derivative and set it equal to this, and it's a mess. It's a trick, and I don't like tricks, right? I mean, it's just fine. It's fine. You've got to do that if you want. But I, I don't want to do that. I want to find, I want to find this. I'm going to do it numerically. I'm going to do it numerically, find lambda and then f remember fc r is going to be lambda times one because the partial of f spec to r so this is the tension in the string so here's what we're going to do we're going to do it numerically first i'm going to say the mass is equal to 0 0.1 it's 100 grams i'm just picking i'm picking a value uh, r is equal to 0 0.3 meters uh, and then i'm going to start with an initial theta theta is equal to pi over 2, right? It's going to start at 90 degrees. And then theta dot is going to be equal to 0. So I'm going to release it from rest. Now, if I do that and I break this into short time intervals, delta t is 0 0.01 seconds, then I can write, I can solve for theta double dot, right? I know theta. I can solve for theta double dot. And then I can say theta double dot is delta theta dot over delta t. So I'm going to assume during this time interval that theta double dot is constant, even though it's not. And this will be equal to theta 2 dot minus theta 1 dot over delta t. So this is the velocity at the beginning of the time interval. This is the velocity at the end of the time interval. So I can use it to solve for the velocity at the end of the time interval. Theta 2 dot, yeah, I have done this a billion times too, is going to be theta 1 dot plus theta double dot delta t. So I know I can calculate theta double dot. I know delta t. I know my initial velocity. So this will give me the velocity at the end of the time interval. Now I can do the same thing for the velocity theta 2 dot. 
assume it's constant, delta theta over delta t, or theta two minus theta one over delta t. So theta two is theta one plus theta two dot delta t. So I just calculated theta, the velocity, so I'm gonna use that one. And then I can go back over again. And then once I know all my thetas and my theta dots, I can find lambda. Okay, so I'm gonna just first model the motion of this. Um, I'm trying to decide, I think I'm just gonna do it numerically. So let's make a graph of theta as a function of time, and then we'll go back and make a, a graph of lambda as a function of time and lambda as a function of theta. So we're gonna do that in Python. So I'm gonna jump over to Python right here. I will give you the code. So don't worry about that. Okay, so I'm using uh, GlowScript vPython in Trinket. Let me make this bigified, really big. Okay. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is make a graph. So G1 e equals graph, uh, title equals um, tension in pendulum. I'm just making it up. I like, I like putting titles now. Um, and then I'm gonna put the X title. I'm gonna, I told you I was gonna plot uh, theta, no time, time in seconds. And then the Y title is gonna be equal to um, theta, radians. And then I like to put the width at say 400 for this video and the height at 200. Uh, that makes it show up nice. Otherwise it's too, it's too, you can't really see it. And then I need a thing to plot. So I'm gonna say F1 equals G curve, uh, color equals color dot blue. I'm trying to think, should I do it in real time? Yeah, let's do it in real time. So I'm gonna do this. Um, oh, no, I won't. Let's just, let's just leave it like that. Okay, now I'm gonna put the rest of my parameters in there. G equals 9.8, M equals 0.1, 0 0.1. Uh, R equals 0 0.3, theta equals pi over two, theta dot, theta dot is zero. Yep, that's all I need. Okay, and then T equals zero, DT equals 0 0.001. So let's do this for two seconds. Yeah, so while T less than two. And I'm not gonna put a rate statement in there because I don't care about how fast this runs. I'm just gonna run it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to calculate theta double dot. Theta D dot, I'm gonna, that's my double dot. And now I have this equation. I'm just gonna type in that equation. Negative G times sine of theta divided by R. Now I'm gonna use that to update theta dot. Theta dot equals theta dot plus theta double dot times dt, and now I'm gonna use that to update theta. Theta equals theta plus theta dot times dt, and now I'm gonna update time. t equals t plus dt. And I guess it, it doesn't really matter. I probably should plot before this. So I'm gonna plot my data point of theta and time. So f1 dot plot t on the horizontal axis, theta on the vertical axis. Let's see if this actually works. Okay. I think it did. Let's see. Tension in pendulum. Okay, so that's the that's the that's the, the angle. Okay. That's the angle. Um let's just change this. I'm gonna plot lambda uh, t versus theta. That's what I'm gonna plot. T versus theta. So I'm gonna change this to theta in radians and then call this T in newtons. And then I need to calculate that, right? So down here, I'm looking at my other equation. I have an equation for lambda. So let's just say lambda is T. Is that okay? So T equals, I'm just gonna type in that equation, negative M times r times theta dot squared minus m times g times cosine theta. Now I'm gonna plot that. So I'm gonna plot theta and t. 
And this is the tension as a function of the angle. Okay, so down here it has a tension in the negative direction. Mm, that should be the opposite. Oh, those are both negative. Why did I get that? It is both negative. So why, I think, so cosine theta, negative mr theta dot squared. Oh, it is negative, okay. Yeah, but I think it should be positive. I'm not sure, I'm not sure about that, but I think it's fine. But you see here when you run it that the maximum tension is at the lowest point. The minimum tension is right at the end, and at the end it should be zero. Okay, and it, and it comes, it doesn't loop back over itself completely because of my time steps too large, I guess. Um, but I want to go over and calculate tension as a function of theta without Lagrangian mechanics just for uh, completeness, and then we can plot that too. Uh, so let's go back over to the paper. Overhead view. Now suppose I have a pendulum, because I do. And I'm going to start with the pendulum over here, and it's going to swing down like this. And so at some point, uh, oh, you know, did I call, I did call that theta, right? Yeah, that's theta. This is the angle theta. If I call the system, the ball plus the earth, then I can use the work energy principle. So I can say the work is the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy. And what forces do work on my system? Well, there is a tension force here. And there's also a gravitational force, which neither of those do work, right? Because this is part of the system, so we're going to have change in gravitational potential energy. And the tension is always perpendicular to the motion, so it does no work. So that means the work is zero, and that's going to be K2 minus K1 plus U2 minus U1. So let's say that I start up here, K1, and this is going to be K2, and this is at zero. It's zero velocity, and let's also call this Y equals zero. So that means I have zero equals uh, K2 minus zero, because it starts up here at rest, plus U2 minus zero. So zero equals k2 one half m v2 squared plus m g y2. And I can get, what I can get from this is the velocity as a function of theta because y2 y is going to be equal to, and I can do this for any variable, right? So it's at any particular point. I picked it at two, but it could be anywhere. So y is going to be equal to negative mg, no, I'm sorry, y is negative r, this value right here, cosine theta. So I have theta I can solve for the velocity. So let's solve for this velocity. I'm going to drop the twos because I can do it for any particular thing. So I get 0 equals 1 half m v squared minus m g r cosine theta. So 1 half m v squared equals m g r cosine theta. And then I can cancel the mass, multiply by 2 and take the square root. v is the square root of 2 g r cosine theta. Okay, so now I have velocity as a function of theta. Now I can get the tension as a function of theta. So let's call this the r direction. So this angle right here is equal to theta. And in the r direction, I know the following. F net r is going to be equal to the tension minus part of the gravitational force, right, because only the component going this way, which is going to be mg cosine theta. And that has to be equal to m v squared over r, mass times circular acceleration, so the acceleration of it moving in a circle. So now I can just solve for t. So t equals m 
v squared over r plus mg cosine theta. Now I can put in my expression for v squared. I shouldn't, it didn't even take the square root. I was just, just fun. So it's going to be m over r times 2, 2g r cosine theta. The r is cancel. And then plus mg cosine theta. So let's clean this up. It's going to be 2mg cosine theta plus Oh, I, took, I put it in terms of theta dot. Okay, so that's fine. Um, I can get it anyway. But So if I say V equals uh, theta dot times R, that's possible, right? Then this is just going to be M theta dot squared. And then so you can see this term right here is the same as this term. It's like there's pluses instead of minuses. So the two things agree completely. Um, now, you you could get theta at t as a function of theta from this, but you couldn't get tension as a function of time because I'd have to solve the differential equation. Okay, but if you just want the tension, you can do that. Okay, Whew, that was fun. That was a lot of work. Okay, I'm done. I'll put a link to the playlist down below. I'll put a link to uh, the code, the Python code down below. Hopefully that helps. Talk to you later.